And welcome everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm really excited to get started. So my name is, for those of you who don't know, my name is Meredith Obendorfer. I'm a director of strategic communications for Autodesk Construction Business Group. Um, and I'm joined by several women here who all have introduced ourselves, um, introduced themselves um, in just a moment. But um, as I dive in, I just kind of wanted to set a little bit of context. I was spurred on um, with this idea, an idea for this panel by my own experience of becoming a mom. Um, I, as many of you have heard me say, I underestimated every single part of it. <laughs> and. Um, and I just became passionate about talking about what it was like to, to balance um, the motherhood, my newfound motherhood, with my career, um, which was challenging, um, but both found challenging and exciting. And as you know, at Autodesk, we're, you know, we um, serve the construction industry. And I conferred with my good friend, Allison Scott, about whether um, you know, there were challenges unique to women in construction. And she just gave me a resounding yes. So we put together this panel, which is um, being live. It's not being live streamed, but being recorded, um, as I understand it, for um, future audiences. So if you're watching digitally, thank you. Uh, <laughs> and with that, I'm going to um, turn it over to our participants. Um, and they'll have them introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about what they're, as you introduce yourselves, why don't you tell us um, your name and you know your company and what you do for the company, and then maybe a little bit about what your day-to-day -day role looks like as a mom, as a working mom in construction. My name is Savi Francis. I am a journeyman pipe fitter, which is HVAC for the Boston Local Union 537, and I work for a company, EM Duggan. My day-to-day -day is I wake up at 3.30 most mornings because I have to start work at 5 a.m. My husband drops our daughter off to daycare. I work until 1.30 usually, sometimes 3, 4 o'clock if it's a push on, a, on the job site I'm on now. And then I go into Boston to pick up our daughter and head home and continue with motherly duties. Full, um, putting away clothes and cooking dinner, things of that nature, and then getting her ready for school the next day. So, Abby, how many kids do you have? Three. One biologically for me and two stepchildren. And what are their ages? One is 22. Another one, she is 12. And the youngest who runs the household is four. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Jen, how about you? Yeah, hi. I'm Jen Seworth. I am a senior vice president at Pepper Construction based in Chicago. It's a general uh, commercial contractor, and I lead everything really around innovation, virtual construction technology, except IT. So really just operations improvement. Um, and I have a two-and-a-half-year-old boy. Um, you know, we'll talk about this on the panel. I'm pretty fortunate to have a partner that does really well sharing 50-50 split, but the split looks different all the time. Um, he is an attorney, so um, his he never stops working like many of us, um, but he also has night meetings because of the clients he has. So typically mornings he'll try to, to do most of the bringing our, our little one into daycare, who just started daycare a few months ago. Um, and then, you know, I'm working, working all day, and then I'm usually literally rushing last parent out at the daycare, picking up my son. Um, but obviously in my role being a senior leader, have a lot of also network and client and other kind of things. So, you know, I like to say I'm the one in charge in the evenings during the week, but the reality is I'm also figuring out all the logistics of babysitters and coverage so that I can prioritize, you know, all things that are important the that, and changes every day. The business of running a family. Yeah. Ruhi. Thank you. Um, my name is Ruhi Thakur. I'm a project manager with Webcore Builders. Um, I work at a biosolids plant. Basically, it's a poop plant. We, <laughs> we, yeah, that always gets me a lot, lot of laughs. <laughs> so um, yeah, my day starts very early. I Most times, I think I wake up 5.45 AM. That's my alarm for every day. Snooze it, 5.50, snooze it, 6. And then run, <laughs> run, run right after that. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to have my uh, husband you know, partner up with me with like all the responsibilities. 
So it's, it's a little different in my case. He works from home. I work in an office. So very, very different from how I grew up. My mom used to stay back home, and my dad was in an office, and it's reverse. So uh, interesting mix of things. And I um, help out on the days that I work from home for like the daycare, drop-offs, and in the evenings, he's generally the one picking her up during the week, and maybe towards like a Monday or a Friday, I uh, go and pick up uh, my daughter. So it's, it's a little busy once she comes back from daycare, that, then after that, both of us are just like, oh, we're doing this, we're doing this, and now we've created a plan, so slowly we're getting hang of things. Uh, my daughter's 15 months old, so we're, we're pretty new to this. Yeah, and that's yeah. an interesting point, though, because I know you, I didn't mention this, but obviously you're in the field working, you're also not staying home. I also am mostly in the office. Um, my husband also mostly works at home when he's not out at client meetings, so... You're right, the dynamic has kind of switched, so I thought that was a good thing to mention. Absolutely, so, um, and Jen, how old's your son? Son, yes, Ronan, he's two and a half. Two and a half. So also, Fun a fairly yeah. new. Yep. I've got a four, and then I've got a, a, a two-year-old yeah. as well. Um, so why don't we just dive in with talking about returning to work? So I, I know it was a little sooner for us, and Savvy, you've had a little bit more time. Um, what was that like for you? Was it a struggle to come back? Was it, were you happy to come back? Uh, maybe somewhere in between? Talk to us about that. And why don't we start with Savvy, actually? So the first time going back, I was going to take six months off. My foreman called me in a month early. And I was fine with it. I heard stories from my other friends who are moms, like, you're going to cry. You're going to miss her and everything. Yeah. I was fine. I, I was like, oh, this is great. I'm going back to work. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't cry. Um, but then the second time going back, because the pandemic had hit in March, um, I remember we got called back in a week after Memorial Day in May. And that's when I started crying because I was like, oh, my God, my baby's still young and she's starting to, like, be more vocal with things. So that time I did cry. But it, once I got there and knew that my daughter was in safe hands with my dad at the time, I was relieved. So it took a little bit of time. It took probably a couple of days for the reality to set in. But I, return, I blended in better with the guys, knowing that there was different protocols on the job site. And what were, what were you, tell us about those protocols. We had to mask up every day. Oh, sure. Um, we had to do questionnaires. Like, there was, like, at the time, I wouldn't even go to the supermarket because I, I was more scared for my child than myself. Um, and she wasn't even a full year old yet. And I was, we would do the Instacart just so I didn't have to go to the supermarket. Um, we'd always wipe down our tools before and after the work day. Everybody drove in by themselves instead of like carpooling previously before that. Um, we had to check out. They did a temperature check in and checking out. So it, it was a lot going on on the job site. I think for a lot of us who have younger kids, the pandemic definitely played a, a role in making motherhood a little more I mean, it's always difficult, right? Mm -hmm. But a little more difficult and challenging than it would have been otherwise. So, Jen, how about you? How was your return to work? Yeah, so we, so at, at Pepper, we have a very good leave policy. Um, you get, I mean, essentially full pay for a few months. And then because we have private insurance, there are opportunities you could extend past those three months. Um, the precedent, though, has been people traditionally take three months. So as someone who, and we'll talk about this later, but somebody who was trying to move to that next level, I was very in my head kind of like, I want to come back three, three and a half months. Um, you hear the same thing. You hear all the stories of, oh, you're going to cry or this or that. Um, and it kind of, so when I was on leave, and I had a very traumatic um, birth, so there was a lot of recovery, and then I felt like as soon as you start to feel normal, it's time to go back. Yeah. But while that short period of time I was feeling normal before I went back, I was so, like probably everyone in this room, type A, like going through the motions, hitting milestones, doing all the different things, and I wasn't <laughs> probably enjoying motherhood as, as much as I should have. Like, they say, like, time flies, and 
I, I feel like it was just flying because I was just like, I got to do this. I got to read X amount of books. I got to do this. I got to hit all the feedings. So when it was time to go back, I also actually was really looking forward to it because I knew for me and the type of person I am, I'm a better mom because I work, because I now when I'm with my son, I just get to enjoy him and care for him. And yes, there's still, there's tons of challenges with that. So I then felt this guilt of everyone says, and I, I had tears the night before, don't get me wrong. Like you're still a little, you know, you're, but I felt guilt that I was happier than I heard most people say they were going to be going back. If you didn't cry, it would be okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so there was that piece. Then, then I go back, and the other piece, and I, I still, actually, AU was one of the first times I probably vocalized publicly that I had a child, um, came back to work, and I didn't want anybody to think differently of me. I literally wanted to be, I have a child that's at home, like, I'm not going to put pictures in front of you. I'm not going to talk about them. And all everybody wanted to do, because there's good people in this world, is I want to hear about them. Show me pictures. And I didn't want people to think of me differently. But the reality is I am different. And so I struck, <laughs> right? Like Audience participation. And so I struggled a lot in the beginning with, like, like recognizing that and so literally last year at AU I was on a panel and I mentioned it was like my first time fly, you know and I had a son and I feel like people that knew me were like you have a child like I had no idea and so I've been really coming to terms with like I'm a like I am different and it's all good and we all have struggles and so now I feel like I'm kind of figuring out who I am. One of the things I've done, and it's, I mean, you bring up an excellent point. So one of the things I've purposely done is not hidden uh, the fact that I've become a mom. Um, mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's because I'm secure in my career. I have an excellent boss who's in the audience. Uh, <laughs> but um, I, you know, especially now that I work from home as opposed to being in the office, and daycare is sometimes daycare is not available. So I've always said, you know my, sorry if you hear a toddler in the background because he's known to push open the door and say hi, you know, in his little toddler voice in the background and I, I can't hide it. So, you know, um, Ruhi, have you had to compartmentalize or how have you, have you, been in, have you incorporated being a mom into who you are at work? Yeah, so um, I don't hide it at all. And to begin with, I, I had a lot of mixed emotions when I went back to work. And um, so I've been with WebCore for, I think, more than six or seven years. And people have seen me grow from a young senior project engineer to a, you know, an assistant project manager to a project manager. So I know a lot of people, familiar faces. But I was returning back to a, you know, a new team, a new manager. So I was a little nervous. How would, how would that go? Like, will they understand my situation? Will I have to explain it a little bit more? Uh, so one thing that I just said is, I love working. I want to go back. But I, I think I'm loving being a mom. And so let me just talk a little bit about that right on my you know, first day, first week. And uh, I just planned, a, uh, planned how my work would progress, you know, how uh, I could work from home some days, work in the office. So it was pretty much thoughtfully coming up with a plan, discussing it with multiple individuals uh, you know, to whom my work would impact, especially my manager. And then uh, hearing me come up with this whole plan and the whole idea of how I would ramp up to where I need to be, uh, I think my manager was on board. And they're still on board and understand me. So. And WebCore, so I take it WebCore is a, a particularly supportive company when it comes to parent. I would say so. Yeah. Awesome. Jen, you were going to say something? I was, I mean, I think, I think more people, bosses, in general are more accepting than we realize. It's in our head. Yeah. And I waited much later in life to have kids because of like many different reasons, but one of them being in my head. And I found similarly, like as soon as I just started talking about it, like at work or just saying, like not being apologetic, like, hey, sorry, not sorry. I just said <laughs> it. Um, but hey, uh, daycare's closing early and my husband 
is out of town. I got to go pick up. And like people get it. Yeah. My HR, my old HR person used to tell me, because I struggled when I wasn't a parent with that challenge, like, wow, that person's leaving early and I'm staying. And she's like, pretend they're going to yoga. Pretend everyone's just going to yoga. You're entitled. D don't, don't care about people, like, is it kids or not? And so now I'm like, I'm going to say kids, but you can pretend I'm going to yoga, but I got to leave. <laughs> I, I feel more entitled to because of kids than yoga. <laughs> I know, but she was like, don't, it doesn't matter, good or bad, like, Everyone's entitled to have a, a, a life outside of work, whether it's a kid or not. And so that helped me to just be like, all right. What have you, I'm hearing the need to draw boundaries. Yes. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about that? How do you, I mean, what other boundaries are you, do you find yourself needing to draw for between work and career? Or work, sorry, and being a mom? Yeah, I mean, some of the boundaries are mainly with myself, I would say. Like when you think about it, we talked about um, some of this, some of us had talked about this a little bit earlier, but um, we are not the same person anymore. And, um, you know, some days jo my job wins, some days my kid wins, some days I win. Like some days everybody kind of wins, but small <laughs> batches. Um, and so I think for me, it was setting boundaries more with myself because we're all like, especially we're all in this room, right? Like we're, we're working, we want to keep moving to that next level. Um, and so the other piece is setting, like talking with my team and creating more transparency around it. So one of the things um, that happened right after I gave birth was I am now, let's see, so he's two and a half years old. I've had three team members have babies since I've had a baby. And um, two, uh, one is a female. And she came to me and, and said, look, before I tell like my own boss and this and that, I want to let you know I'm having a baby. And I just said, oh my god, congrats. That's amazing. And I helped set boundaries for her. I was like, look, you will come back on your terms. I won't bother you for three months. Three months, I'm going to check in if you want another month. We'll figure it out. I said, when you come back, she was coming back to be full time on our largest project in our, our company. So he said, all right, we're going to figure out your schedule. And, and so like setting those boundaries and it works and everybody's accepting. So, so like I think I felt like my boundaries were more with myself, but then I became setting boundaries for others, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Because people don't know what they don't know. And if you're a good worker, like you're going to figure it out. Savvy, you're in a unique position because you're in the field, right? Do you feel like you're in a position to be able to set boundaries or does you, I know you've talked to us a little bit about the, how supportive your manager is. Um, tell us more about that. So I am involved with my union. I'm involved with a pre-apprenticeship program, Building Pathways also. I'm involved with the Mass Building Trades. I sit on many boards, but before I decided to take on all those roles, I knew I had to talk to my husband as well because yeah. a wise man I worked for in the field told me, yourself and your family comes first. You're not married to your career. Um, just make sure that you make time for yourself and your family as well. So I know I have to pick and choose what to do on certain nights. Um, I. We have a calendar at home, so that way, if because my husband could be very forgetful at times, and he'll be like, "Where are you?" Like, look at the calendar. I wrote it down. <laughs> we went through this, but other than like, I know there's times where I'm like, "All right," if I get a call like, "Hey, can you come to this board meeting?" and I know it's last second, usually I'll have to decline that because, like I said, I like to go through my team before I just make an executive decision on for myself because I'm not the only provider at my household. Um, I also, we also, it, I do have a great support system where I can call my mother-in-law or my mother to see if they can grab my daughter from daycare for me. But usually I will take her with me and I'll call my husband like, hey, I'm taking my daughter, our daughter, to a, an event, I'm just letting you know, you'll have to fend for yourself for dinner at this point. So, and usually he's grateful for that, that I'm giving him a heads up. But that, that 
it's more so of the boundaries um, when it comes to like doctor's appointments and everything. My husband also works from home as well. He's a social worker. He has a lot of time with his, his career, so he's able to take her. Um, also, sometimes if I get asked to work on a Saturday with my job at the site, my husband, he's usually lenient, like, go ahead, take it, whatever. But at times, like, my daughter's in dance, and I'm like, I don't want to miss watching her practice for this either because they only stay so little for so long. Mm -hmm. So sometimes that's up in the air. And the good thing, I work with um, the foremans I work for are all married men. So, and they all usually have daughters, which is hilarious about it too. So they're like, go, go, like, yeah. that's more important. Like, it's more important for your child's face to have a smile than the overtime. Like, the overtime's always yes. going to be there. That, like, they help me also decide on my decision when it comes to picking and choosing certain things to that nature. Yeah, you, that goes back to, like I was saying, setting boundaries for myself. One thing I stumbled on when I first went back to work was, like, I was so used to having a really great partner that I, like, kind of took advantage of it. And I learned really quick that I was like, oh, if someone asked me to go to this client meeting, I know it's important, but he doesn't know right. that. Yeah. So like check in and it's, and like that, it, it was very quick before I realized that, but like setting, yeah, checking in and making sure it works for us was really important. Right. We, we share calendars. Yep, same, <laughs> same, we share uh, calendars. My, my Outlook calendar at work has everything about my personal life, I think, right now. <laughs> and that's the, I think that's the only way I can survive yeah. and remember things. Yep. Um, Is your calendar, di it's digital versus, we have, yeah. a, we have a whiteboard. We have a whiteboard too. <laughs> we in have the both. Kitchen. <laughs> in the kitchen. We yes. have both. I get yeah. that like, is yeah. it on the calendar question? Because he's not yeah. big on technology. Sunday night, we go yeah. through the calendar. The food calendar is different, the which is planning. on the kitchen. Meal and planning. Then, yeah, <laughs> <the> one. <laughs> Yeah. So what, I mean, that's a great tag to our next question. Uh, what, you know, what role does your partner play in your success, you know, whether it's childcare or emotional support? Yeah, it's, it's a loaded question. <laughs> I think the best thing that I can say to that is um, attending this conference today here. Uh, my husband was invited to this conference and he had everything planned months ahead of this date. And I think I got invited maybe around August, September, so which was much later than when he made his plans. And both of us, we, we, we came from India. We don't have a lot of family here. Uh, the closest family I have is my brother in San Diego. He has a sister in Phoenix. So where do we leave our daughter? There is no one. Daycare is only during the day. We asked if they could do you know, extended times, but they wouldn't cover overnight or things like that. So how do we make this work? And I, my first reaction to Ali was maybe, you know what, I'm, I'm just gonna pass, I'm not gonna come here. Uh, but I said, okay, let me, let me think about it again. And so I spoke to him. He's the first person I uh, spoke to and he's saying, yeah, maybe we can make it work. I'm like, how? <laughs> and he said, well, you go, you go do your thing. I'm gonna hang out with her in the room. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh. So she's is, here. She's here. Is Wake is the best place to take a baby? Uh, he said, uh, yeah, we, we'll, we'll take her. Like, and so then I was like, okay, let me, I, I, I didn't have that much confidence even then. Then I spoke to my manager at work and I told her I've been invited for this panel and she said, it's a great opportunity. You should go. And then I started explaining my situation to her and she's like, mm hmm but yeah, yeah, you should go. I think she motivated me uh, to the point where I felt a little more confident that I can take this step. And so today I am here, he is in the room with our daughter or next to the pool, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's how, that's, that's the role of the partner, how important it is. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm doing the flights with her, which is terrible, but, uh, <laughs> but at least I could make it here. And I think uh, later on, maybe we will have role reversal. He'll have something like this come up and I'll <laughs> step up. So uh, really thankful to have someone like this in my life uh, where we don't have the immediate family support, but uh, I guess we made it work. Um, so. That's exciting. Yeah. Too bad she can't be here. In the room. Oh, I know. <laughs> so cute. But I have a two-year-old, so I know how that goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm running around. Yeah. yeah. Savvy, how, how about you? You know, you've talked a little bit about um, your husband. 
How is he, I mean, he, I know he's got a busy day, you know, busy day. Right. Um, so he helps out a lot. Um, so we have in my daughter's closet, the days of the week, like a shoe compartment thing where we put her outfits in for the week. So that way, when I leave for work, he's getting her ready to bring her to daycare. Um, and like I said, there's times where I, he's like, are you sure you want to take her to the event? Um, drop her off in my mother's, I'll pick her up after I'm done working because he's been doing 12 hour days. Um, he helps out a lot. like. I'll do the washing for the clothes, drying. I come home, it's all folded up neatly on the bed and I just, I put it away. He take, we have pets that love, adore him because he's the one that feeds them and <laughs> takes them out. We have a dog and two cats, so he's busy even though he's working. Um, and then I like the point that you made about having your son during a meeting, because sometimes that kind of gets him out of meetings when he has our daughter, like, oh, my daughter's here, whatever, and she's like in the Zoom camera, like, who's that, pointing. But he's, he's great. Um, if I'm not there to take her to dance, he takes her. I just make sure, like, everything's laid out. Um, sometimes I let her help me lay out the stuff, which, um, good luck when your kids are <laughs> at that age where they want to wear <laughs> certain things, but, it's good for our daughter too because it expresses her um, at that age. But he, he's great. If he knows I'm too tired to cook, he'll ask, what do you want to eat? I'll go get it. He's not gonna cook it, he'll cook breakfast. I'll give him that, he cooks breakfast every weekend. Um, but other than that, if he sees like I'm drained sometimes, I'll doze off when I get home on the couch. And he's like, what do you want? I'll go get it now. I'll take my break from work now to go pick up something get ready, get ready, um, go lay down. So, and he motivates me every day, especially like the gym. I'm horrible at it, but when he says things, I'm like, you know what, I gotta do it because you're in there with a messed up arm, Let, let's go do it, whatever. But he, he's just great um, with her. Like I said, that's her world. I'm, I'm her world when he's not around, but when she knows he's around, she could sniff him out, it's daddy, <laughs> daddy, daddy. Um, but yeah, he, I, it, I can't even describe in words how great he is. Like, we're, we're alike, but we're not. Like, I'm the more nice person. Like, I'm the good cop, he's the bad cop um, person. Like, he's, he keeps me in line with things, especially when I do get the phone call for an event. He'll, like, listen, this needs to be taken care of at home, and then I'll sit there and think about it. I'm like, you know what, you're right, I'm coming home. Let me decline this now while it's still early enough where they can find somebody else in my place. Like, it's, just, it's the communication part. We have the good communication. I think if the communication wasn't there, then it would be upside down from there. But he, he's great to me. He's been there before I got into the union. Um, he came to events. He's actually walking around Vegas right now. <laughs> he jumped on because he was like, who are you going with? I was like, I'm going to fly in myself, whatever. He's like, I'll go. I've never been. And then the other day, he's like, I'm never coming back to this place. <laughs> he's like, even if you're not, like, we're not gamblers. He's like, even if you're not gambling, somehow Vegas is taking your money. Um, so, but he, he's a great, he's a great support. That's awesome. Can you replicate him? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can. I'll try. <laughs> so, um, you know, one of the things you said reminded me of, um, I don't know if you guys remember being in the early days of the pandemic, and there was a CNN reporter. Or he was, it was an expert. He was giving an interview about, it was like international diplomacy. It was a weighty topic. And his kids toddled into the background on the little mm. roller. <laughs> And his wife like ran in, like yeah. ducked behind, and like tried to you know roll them out of the. Oh, yeah. and it was on live TV, and I feel like it was such a minor thing, but it was almost like a. I hate this word, game changer. It was like a game. Yeah. Everyone who's a mom, it's a game changer. Uh, you know, it's a, it was a game changing moment to just allow that n normalized being a parent in the workplace. Um, so just you, it, it reminded me of that. Um, Jen, you know, what do you think, um, I, both of you have talked about, my, I know that um, Savvy, I know you've talked about being supportive, um, supported by your managers, right? And Jen, you're in a leadership position. Um, what do you, uh, what would you say that um, 
employers as a whole, I mean, you're a lot closer to the top, get right about being a, a working mom, particularly in construction. You know, I think well, a lot of what we're talking about, about applies to working moms, regardless of the industry you're in, right? Um, but what about, what is the construction company, what do they get right? Sorry, that. Yeah, so obviously being more male dominated, um, they surprisingly relate to moms more than you realize. I think I had more male colleagues coming to me and asking how I'm doing than even females, probably because a lot of the females were struggling, you know, figuring out their own journey in life. Um, so I'll give you the story of uh, a little bit of what I thought was gonna happen when I was announcing I was having a baby. Um, so I, I talked to my boss, I waited exactly to the moment where the doctor says, all right, you, you should tell people, it's safe. Um, and I was so nervous to tell my boss who has um, the Pepper last name at the time. Well, he still does, but I have a different <laughs> boss now. Um, and I called him and um, yet being a leader in the company, you know, the, I'm in my head like, how's he gonna react? And so when I mentioned to him, he right away just says, congrats, that's so exciting, how are you feeling? Like I didn't hear a second of panic, which was so refreshing. And even when we started talking about my leave, he's like, all right, when are you due? Let's back it up. He goes, cause Jen, when you go on leave, that's it. Like, we're not calling you. What you could be in the middle of a meet like you're 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 somewhere else. He's had three kids of his own, so he um he gets it. And I was like, wow, this was way easier than I thought. Um and I know that not everybody's that way, but I do feel like um it's kind of like how we've talking a lot more about mental health in the industry. I think things are becoming more normalized. And I think if someone isn't talking about it, they just don't know how to. It's not yes, there's still always going to be those jerks, but like in general people just, you know, they're good. So, I had that experience then fast forward to you know, I'm coming back from leave and it's right around our comp time. So it's when you're finding out about your salaries and your bonuses and all that. Um, and I find out that I got my full bonus. And I literally said to him, which is, which is stupid, but I said, wow, I, because I was gone for three and a half months, I really thought I wasn't gonna get my full bonus. And he looked me dead in the eye and said, Jen, the fact your team did so well while you're gone is an even bigger reason why you deserve this bonus. Like yeah. what you're doing, he's like, you, I can't even believe that thought went through your head. And I was just like, well, glad I have the, the letters. You can't take it back, stupid me. No. <laughs> but, um, but it was just really nice to hear that he was like shocked I even thought that and probably also said it out loud. Um, <laughs> And then fast forward, I'm back figuring out being a mom and I was a VP at the time and was having very um, great conversations with the C-suite and my boss about moving to that next level. And I, I, in my head, of course, was, man, are they, is this gonna delay anything? And I, I still, there were no promises, there never is until that that thing is in front of you, but um, I was very concerned that like, oh, are they gonna now wanna delay this because let's see how Jen is as a mom. Like, mm. so I was very in my head, which probably caused me to also shut down more and not talk about my son and like just be fully like work Jen, work Jen. Um, and I ended up getting promoted in January, you know, that, so I've been now a senior VP since January of this year. Um, the timing all worked out exactly whether I had left to have a kid or not, it mm -hmm. would have, did not change. Um, and I actually feel like I'm a better leader and uh, contributor to the company now that I am a mom because I've learned different skills that, or and things that I think I took for granted that I didn't realize right. before, like time, like, 
I probably get a little more frustrated um, at work because every second counts. And it should, like it really should at work, but like when you're working and, oh, I, I don't know, chit-chatted by the coffee pot and now I'm going to stay an extra half hour, not a big deal. It is a big deal now. And so every second counts and I'm just always at work mode, which means I need to balance also finding that time to say, by the way, I, you want to see a picture of Ronan? Because I'm just like, every second counts. So there's a balance. But yeah, it, it, yeah I mean, it, it's been a really positive thing. And to hear my team now who are younger having kids and I'm like, hey, I know what you're thinking. I bet you're feeling this. And like, we had a, sorry, we had one more thing. We had a female at work, not on my team, had a baby. She was in a almost completely male group. I didn't know her. I came back, or she came back from maternity leave, and I made a meeting with her in a conference room. I went to that office that day and said, I had an agenda for work, but really my main reason was to sit with her and say, hey, how are you doing? Because you've been back a few weeks. I've been in your shoes recently. She broke down in tears and said, that means the world to me because, like, nobody else had done that. And so those little moments, even if it's small and just a couple people, have made things. And I'm hearing my male counterparts starting to do that when they hear these stories. Yeah. So we're all good people, and the construction industry is full of good people. And so these moments just need to keep happening, and they'll get comfortable. You said so much that resonates with yeah. me. One of the things, I have a, a close friend of mine who has four kids, and she talks a lot about the mom tax. You know, one of our questions oh. we had was, you know, how has, you know, being a mom, has it helped your career or stalled yeah. your career? Um, do any of you feel like you've, your career stalled a little bit or you've paid the mom tax because and, and I will say one of the things that I'm very cognizant of as we've having this conversation is it's a very US based conversation yeah, right? right and in that we feel a certain level of obligation or guilt to come back to work after three months five months you know if we're lucky lucky is five months right where our counterparts around the globe nothing made me feel like the US yep. is like <laughs> I, I don't know, I'll save the expletives, but like socks, right? <laughs> At mater maternal health care and parental leave policy is having a child. You're like three months, I eked out five months, and it still didn't feel like enough, right? But so even parental, like males, right? Like a dad getting two weeks. Yeah. Like, so, right. It's huge. Every, like, like three weeks, you're like, whoa. But like even three leave, months, yeah. we rush back. There was a episode of Succession. It was like the last episode. I don't know how many people watched Succession. And she's like, oh, I, you know, I'll start work after, right at, you know, from the labor and delivery room, right? It's so, so one, we're having a fairly US-based conversation where, um, you know, other countries get, you know, I think it's Canada gets nine months or a year, Europe gets a year. Um, and I'm not sure they quite feel the rush to get back. Back. But also similarly, um, to back to the mom tax comment, mm -hmm. um, or feeling stalled, you know, because you figure you t we've taken, for us it's only three months, but you know, for my friend who's had four kids, that's equivalent of a year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like, how does that, do any of you have any thoughts about it, even if you haven't experienced it? Yeah, I think for me, I took more than three months, almost close to six. Uh, so that's a lot of time, Good staying away, away from work, yeah. Uh, and I think a lot of credit goes to, I guess, San Francisco policy and California leave. It's great. Um, it's ge generally great. I, yeah, yeah, that's what I hear. Uh, then I was a little worried about what, what does this mean in terms of getting promoted, going to the next level. And I mean, it bothered me a lot. And I might have stayed awake nights thinking about it. But then I also started thinking a career is a lifespan. Yeah. And it's not this one year will define my career or just two years. And I was telling myself, if I need to take this one year and dedicate it towards a different goal, it's not that I'm not building anything in that process. I'm still building a skill set, just like you said. Mm -hmm. uh, a skill set of um, maybe managing my time better, learning how to be more productive, 
these are things that I'm still building. And maybe I have different goals for this one here. It's not very extremely professional level goals, but I will get there in some time. So yes, an impact by a year or two, but in this 30 year span of a career that I will have, hopefully I have, uh, I hope I have opportunities where I can make up for the time that I have lost maybe uh, one year not concentrating on a professional goal. Uh, and sometimes I feel it's not gonna come to me easily. That opportunity is not gonna come to me. I may have to take an extra step, work towards it, just like how I'm making an extra effort to work towards my daughter and enjoy motherhood. The same thing will happen to me professionally at some point. So that's the way I've been dealing with it. I know there is an impact in the short term, but what, what does it mean in the long term? And what do I want to focus more on a sprint or a marathon? Oh, so that's how I'm thinking about it right now. Perfect. We'll see what happens. <laughs> we're rooting for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know, so I think we're, I'm actually keeping an eye on time. Um, we've got about 20 minutes left. Um, do, I figured we'd open up to the audience for questions um, or just open conversation. Um, does, I mean, does any, the points resonate with anyone? I mean, we've made a lot of points, right? Um, whether it's the, I would say, let's do this. But well, before I open it up, let's ask one last question. Um, what do you wish leaders knew um, about being a working mom, in particularly in the construction industry? What, you know, we've talked, I asked a little bit about what they've done right. We didn't really get into like what they've done wrong. Um, but what do you wish they, they knew? I have one thing right away that I want to say is yeah. I wish, I see like a lot of tech companies, other industries have a ramp up program. And I feel I created my own program, but maybe we should formalize that a little bit more and come up with a plan to support um, a, a, a woman, you know, to get where she wants to become, I mean, where she wants to go. So that, that's something I would like to see in most companies. Hmm. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. Zavi, how about you? The leadership with my company, at, at, I don't think there's any wrong with them. Um, the guy that owns the company is a father of two young sons. And even when I was pregnant, he'd always ask how I'm doing, how I'm feeling and everything. Um, he, a lot of the higher ups in the company would text me to see if I needed anything. Cause I worked up until I was eight and a half months pregnant. So from the time they found out I was pregnant up until the day um, I left for, to have my daughter, they made sure that I wasn't on a ladder. Um, I wasn't doing any work that would harm myself or my child. Um, they made sure that, like, listen, whatever day you need, need off, we will not penalize you for it, for ultrasounds. And so I made sure I did it in the afternoon after work, just so I didn't have an excuse to not come into work or leave work extra early to go, um, to, go to my doctor's appointment. And they, like I said, they've always taken care of me, even till now. Like, I still get um, phone calls from the outside super and from the owner of the company asking about my daughter. Like, they'll ask on a first name basis. They'll ask about my son and my other child as well, too. Um, they keep asking me when my son's going to join the trades because he's home from the Air Force right now. So it's, it's little things. Like, I said, I, they're such a, it's a family oriented company. It's, um, passed on for like, I want to say three generations. So they know they had their daughters working in the shop. They've actually had family members working in the field for them as well for the company because the company I work for, it's three different trades under it. The plumbers, the pipe fitters, and the sprinkler fitters. So each of them have had family members work for one of those particular trades. Um, yeah, I remember they threw a baby shower for me the last day. So it's, I, I couldn't say, and they, they have leadership in like the marketing for women, um, different roles. The company's so big, so it's like I can go on about them. <laughs> sure, sure. So yeah, I, I can't say there's any, anything that they would know. But I can say about the union, the UA, they call it United Association. Last year, I was actually here in Vegas when the president of the UA announced that they finally put a maternity leave in for members, for the pipe fitters, sprinkler fitters, 
in the plumbers. <laughs> so I was like, geez, can it get backdated to 2019? <laughs> right? yeah. But I'm happy they're able to do that. So now more and more women actually in my trades are actually having babies because of the maternity leave being put in place. And we have the- um, We're staying in the trades. Yes, yeah. and yes, yeah. exactly. And the guys I know I've worked with, um, we get locks on our bathroom doors. And they're like, you know what, if they see the lock not there, they'll actually give me the heads up my form and like go somewhere else. Like go find a restaurant that you're friendly with that will let you use the bathroom because we trust you coming right back, especially being pregnant because the men are gross, I'm sorry. <laughs> Using the bathroom, but it's, uh, the leadership's, all, they've always been great to me. Um, and like I said, I'm happy that the United Nation, the United Association finally put that into play so women don't have to try to hide their pregnancy on the job site and they're comfortable being pregnant now. Um, for me, I didn't have to hide my pregnancy. Um, I, my foreman, he was a great guy who found out I was pregnant, just ended up, it spread like wildfire <laughs> on the job site. Um, so guys were like, no, don't pick that up. Like, I'll pick it up. I'm like, it's a two gallon bucket with my, little, my hand tools. I can pick it up. But it's always the, the leadership for both on the job site and in the office, they've always supported me. That's such a fine line though, right? <laughs> yeah. Between like, I can still do it. I'm, right. not, I'm just pregnant, right? right? right. <laughs> um, and, and someone told me yesterday, I can't remember who, they might be in this room, but it doesn't matter, that when they were, uh, they returned to work, they were pumping in a closet with concrete dust falling on them oh. on the job site, right? So I think we've painted a pretty good, a nice picture up on this stage, but, um, and I certainly don't want to turn it into a negative conversation, but I think there's still, like, we're very much on the, on the cusp <laughs> yeah. um, of, um, you know, being both supportive and still having that, like, I and I think that what I'm hearing from this group is we've still internalized that and in that we don't give ourselves much grace um, and we push ourselves because there was still, we're still making a case for to, the right to be there yeah. to a certain extent, right? So, um so in any event, um, why don't we open it up to you know, any thoughts from the audience? Questions, thoughts, are we, you know, does this resonate with you? What are your own experiences? Oh. Allie, there's someone in the back. Why don't we start with her? Coming. Is this working? It's working. Yep. Hi. Um, so I guess my question, I guess for everybody, how do we handle the mom guilt I have a 10 month old. I'm obviously, we're, I work from home, my husband works from home, so we're both with him all the time. We're looking into daycare and a nanny. I'm struggling, do I wanna stay at home and put my career on pause to be with him because he's still so little? Or do I, you know, come back into work full fledged and, you know, try to keep growing my career? So how do you handle that mom guilt? How do you handle the mom guilt of choosing your career first is what I hear you say. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I can start. So the mom guilt is real. And uh, the short answer is that your, your journey and answer is not the same as anyone else's. So my biggest piece of advice is whatever is right for you is the right answer. And you're going to hear, it's like, constant comment section, right, in life. Like, you're going to hear all sorts of things. And there are pros and cons to 100% of the things that we do. Um, I think I, I have really forced myself, because I get it. I, I had a nanny when I started. I eventually switched to daycare. There are pros and cons. You know, I hear all the gamuts of things. And um, I just have to know that what I'm doing is, is right for me and my family, and it might look different than someone else. I also recognize while there are some benefits of staying home, for me, my son is benefiting from me working because of my mental health, and that is so much more important. Like, it's quality versus quantity, but that's not the same for any two people, and I think just try to 
know that whatever decision you make is the right decision and that might change in a year or three months and that is okay and I guarantee for as many people that are judging there's as, just as many people saying I feel the exact same way so just use your network use your people like even just prepping for this panel yeah. like it's just reassuring you're going to make the right choice because that's, that's what's, what's right. Ignore the peanut gallery. Yeah. <laughs> Ignore the peanut gallery. And, you know, it, it's, it's know that it's okay to love your career. Yes. Yeah. I think that's You're the thing. Human. that we, Yeah, it's the thing we struggle with, right? It's, I didn't, like, I actually felt guilt for not feeling guilty. Yeah. Right? And I was like, well, I couldn't wait to get back. Um, I did have my moments of breakdown, as some of the women in this room can attest. Um, but also, you know, for me, it was like finding other women who were just as career-driven. Yeah. Well, and also, so I, I dated my husband for 10 years before we got married. Then we were married for 10 years and had a kid. Um, I chose to have a child later in life. I wasn't sure if I wanted one or not. And then when I decided, part of it was in my head, like, timing all of that. And I just, yeah, you're, you're, you're making choices and it's what's right for you. Well, and I would also say what Jen, you said is, is your child happy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, of well, course. And exactly. And, and to add to my journey of 20 years with my significant other, I am a human, right? Like, I have a life. And, like, I think one of the things I got in my head early, when I was young was, you have a kid, your life's over. And... What I realized is my life might be different, but I am still entitled to feelings and being productive in the world and having happiness. And I, I, I hope and think my son is thriving because of that. Um, so just know you are entitled to be, you're entitled to have a bad day. You wanna just go to, we talked about Target, running to Target, <laughs> Target just running. walking around <laughs> by yourself, you're entitled. <laughs> yeah, my husband said yesterday we were talking, he came too. This is my first trip away from our son. So Aww. we yeah. felt it was fair that we came together. <laughs> so, Aww, that's so wonderful. he said to me and he, I was like, I don't know, like, if I want to be a mom or if I want to go back to work, like, you know, really like, yeah. you know, focus on my career. And he was like, okay, one stop. You're always going to be a mom. Like that's yep. just, that never, that never goes away. You can stay at home and be a mom. Or you can, you know, have your career. So he's like, don't think that you're not a mom. And I think I have been, like, separating the two. Like, if I fully go back to work, am I, you know, losing out on the opportunity to be, you know, a full-time mom? So. You'll figure it out. Trust me. Well, it's like that work-life integration that Jen was talking about, right? Like, showing up as both yourself and a mom and a working person. Yeah. Like, they're all connected choose. now. I, got, I feel like, I feel strongly about not needing to compartmentalize. Yeah, yeah. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> uh, there was a, yeah, there's a question right here on the third row. Allie. And then up front, but she was set her hand up first. I'm surprised you can see. I know, the <laughs> lights are very bright. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my name's Anne. Uh, I'm a high school teacher, but I used to work in the field of architecture. So, once I had my kid, I wasn't able to do full-time work anymore, and including I'm a divorcee, so I don't have the support that you ladies have. Um, so, and not only that, working in the teaching field for, in California for ROP, I don't get the same support um, with my uh, agency. So I was wondering, what, what can I do to create a platform for stronger women in the workforce, like in, in general? That's, like, a, big, that's like, a big question. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I, I, it, it goes down to a lot of things, like salary pay to mm -hmm. j just across the board. Yeah, I think something that we've started at work, uh, this, these are some colleagues of mine uh, who actually had babies recently, recently meaning in, during the pandemic, and uh, looking at them, I was motivated to have my baby. But then what, what she started was uh, a program called Build Hers. And uh, that program is, it's, it's slowly, it's in its infancy. Uh, they're basically just gathering everyone at work, men, women, whoever is interested in the topic, and have the conversations 
Uh, this is happening quarterly right now. It started really small, but the last time I attended, I actually saw close to 100 people. We have 400 people working on our site on a daily basis, and a, a lot of them are women. Uh, last one that I attended, she was able to gather close to 100 women in that discussion. The first one probably started with 15 people in that group. And uh, we've been talking about topics like childcare. Uh, how, what, what do we do with childcare? Like someone, the, the people who work on the site, they have to come there by 7 a.m., 6 a.m. to start their work. If it's a concrete pour, they're doing it at 4 a.m. So what, what does childcare look like with those early times? I mean, I work in an office and I still struggle with drop-offs. Uh, so that, that was a very close you know, topic for me. Uh, then we've been, I think, talking about just um, like respect and ability for uh, you know women to have that right to be there and not feel guilty of like leaving work early or things like that. So I think just starting a platform like that where you are getting more people join over time has helped us because what we do right now in our teams is where that's a topic in our weekly trade contractor meeting is, uh, hey, this week we have the Build Her event and all you subcontractors, any gals and men, if interested, please go attend that. So it's something that we are personally motivating a, uh, a foreman who's coming to a meeting or a superintendent and we're telling them, please go participate in them. And, and a lot of times just listening and hearing to what's being discussed just at least helps start, you know, start with the solution of the problem. Uh, that's what I've seen at my job site, and I think we're a very community-based project because it's a wastewater treatment in a community, it's for the community, so uh, these are some very, very important topics for us. So I think starting small for sure, but uh, having that platform would help. Well, for us in Boston, we have a pilot program called Care That Works where it's targeted um, daycares, in-home daycares, where they'll open at 5 a.m. for construction workers, hotel workers, first responders that have to be there. My daycare actually just signed on to it for myself, because um, I start work at 5 a.m., but my husband would be the one to drop her off because he actually has to start work at 7, and most daycares in the Boston area open at 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing, and then I sit on our women's committee group as well. So there's the support there where we listen for a sister who's having issues, whether it's childcare wise or just needs a support system um, to lean on and we'll try to collect the donation for that, especially for the single mothers to help with um, a certain bill or anything. Um, and then we have a Facebook group, Boston Union Trade Sisters, where we do meetups every once in a while where we work with the community also, um, trying to put together information like we've helped out with the Boston Teachers Union at one point, getting supplies donated from other union trades as well. Um, but we do have a lot of single mothers that work in the field who do feel like they want to give up, but then there's always some uh, another sister and actually some brothers that will step in like hey if you need time to yourself and if you trust me we'll watch a kid because a lot of times you're actually working alongside some of these people like i've worked the guys i'm on the job site i've known for 10 years since i've got in um i've gone on other job sites where i worked with other people but the foreman i'm working for now i worked for him when i was a second year apprentice i've been in for 10 years and like i hear where there's support like you get to know their families as well not everybody's going to have that support with their own family, but we have it within the union. If somebody gets hurt on the job site, there's donations from every trade um, person. With the, like I said, with the single mothers, we try to come together by doing the school supplies, like, and we try to do it discreet so that way that particular mom or even that single father is not embarrassed to receive those donations. Um, and I know it's still, we're still in the early part of the Ch Care That Works program, um, but that's been a big help for a lot of the tradespeople that have gotten in to get their children in daycare so they can get to work on time. Because it's showing up on the job site is 90% of your work there. Um, and 
they don't want to keep, the foremans don't want to hear uh, my kid's daycare doesn't open till seven and you're showing up at 7.30, so, like getting a speeding ticket or any, like, then you have school buses out, so you're stuck in traffic all the time too. So the, that's something um, I would try to look into like a program within your district or the state you live in if they have something particular to that for childcare opening early or even if you need like an after school program as well for your child so that way you're not being hit on with fees for picking up your child late from that particular daycare. I think the big thing is look and see what's out there but don't be afraid to create something and like you know, start small, going to stuff, listening to this. Now, you know, I'm sure if you reached out to any of us, you know, you have great contacts, get new ideas, start small, you can create from within, you can build that community. And I get it, I, I feel fortunate having a, a spouse here, but I, I don't have parents that are healthy enough to help. So I had to find creative ways to fill some of those gaps in times like this event. Um, so just start building connections and stuff's going to start to flow organically and then there's a power in numbers. And you know, we have an issue with getting people this industry, maybe the unions should uh, offer child care and maybe we'd get a yeah. ton of people in construction. But like, it's just our voice, like we just got to keep being out there and you'll be surprised what you can find or simple things you can do with just a few other people to keep building that. I would say, keep speaking up. It's yes. your voice, right? DEI is a huge issue. It's a widely accepted issue. It's accepted as an issue now. Being a working mom is a DEI issue. Yeah. So you make it an imperative to be part of the conversation. You'll find other people that are out there. Um, and it's not and like no one's. It's not easy, you know. I think, like I, I said earlier, there's a little bit of a rosy picture up here, but um, uh, it's not being a working mom is hard. I'm newly separated, and I'm, I'm figuring out what that looks like for me, and without that, that solid support, right? And so, but you have to keep, find your voice, keep speaking up, saying, "I'm a working mom. Are you thinking about us?" Right? And and you know, you get people, you force people to pay attention. So we're at time. I know there was one more question. Um, I, I don't know if our recording cuts off. Do we want to ask that one question or go ahead? No, I just wanted to applaud Ruhi, right? It was the yeah. name. Yes, the, for bringing your, your kid to the conference because um, it's going to be setting a perfect example for them watching you speak here and succeed. I mean, I myself spoke yesterday and I also brought my daughter who's seven. And <laughs> thank you. And I want her to see that because it's, it's an example that you're setting for them. Um, yes, the, I don't have family nearby either, so I would be traveling, bringing her over, or staying in the hotel the whole day, but she gets to go out a little bit, right? But even yesterday when she called me right before my session and she goes, mommy, mommy, and that, you know, invigorates you, right? So it, it, she, your kid will eventually be doing the same for you and cheering for you. Um, the other thing- give me mom guilt because my child does. <laughs> <laughs> kidding, no, but, no, no. no, this is super inspiring. Yes. I'm gonna bring my son to a future conference. Yes, okay? yes, yeah. I think I think Meredith asked me right at the beginning, uh, are you gonna bring her? I'm like, oh, maybe. <laughs> and then that's where I think everything started, so. Yeah, yeah and then later you get with the, with, the, with the school and missing school, but I talked to the school and I said, I'm gonna be speaking at a conference, blah, blah. You know, in a way, you're teaching them something else outside of school. She still yeah. has her packet of homework, but it's important for them to see that. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. awesome, thank you. Thank you. One more? Thanks okay. for sharing that. One more. One more Awesome. Yeah, so um, going back to the mom guilt, and this is a great segue to what you're just saying. I was trying to find the article um, that my manager sent me, like my last two managers ago, because um, I used to travel a lot for, for work, and it, it, I found it, and it says, why work 
um, Why Working Moms Raise Great Kids, and it was based on a Harvard study, and basically the study shows that having a working mom helped the daughters to be more successful in the workplace, and they had more supervisory roles, and sons um, were generally more empathetic and had fewer problems in adapting to non-traditional gender roles when raising their own families, and just setting that example mm -hmm. is what made me feel not guilty when that I had to like travel. By Bob yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. It's so yeah. yeah, it was great to, to have this and also have that support from my manager. That was like the last person that I expected to send me that that article, which was great. Yeah. And I think there's like so much motivation in the world. Uh, the 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 lady who won the Nobel Prize this year, uh, Caitlin Karakow, I think that's her name, for medicine. And then she was, she was asked a question, um, you're, you're just the 13th out of the 200 women. Like we don't have a lot of women winning the Nobel Prize uh, award. And then she, and, and then like, she's like, yeah, we, we give birth, we go through these things and there's so many things in life. So women are held back. But then she was basically talking about her story where, yeah, we, we got through it. And my daughter just grew up fine. She watched her mom and dad really work hard. And now she's, she said some, you know, some achievements that her daughter has you know, done. So yeah, yeah people, are, people are doing things everywhere in the world. And some have support, some don't have. But we're all figuring it out. And I think that's the, the, the motto. When I see her, people like her speak, I think I just get fired up. I, I need to do it. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah. That is a great article, and I'm glad you brought that up. So um, definitely, I encourage you all to read that and look into that Harvard study, because that helped me a lot with the mom guilt. Harvard, Google Harvard study, working mom. Yeah. <laughs> um, and well, with that, we're, we're time. Thank you so much. Um, this has been a lovely conversation. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. And I guess that's a close. It's a wrap. <laughs>